and we'll get started. Okay, hi everybody. Thank you for joining Jenkins Online Meetup. In today's session, we will be covering the last four project ideas of um, GSOC 2024 project ideas list. My name is Alyssa Tong. I'm one of the org admins. And on this webinar with me are three other org admins, uh, Chris Stern, Jean-Marc Mason, Bruno Varocton. Chris and Bruno are also lead mentors or mentors and lead mentors for um, our projects. Also with us are Alex and Valentin. Both are also lead mentors. Moving on to the next slide. All right, so some housekeeping notes before we begin. If you're not speaking, please mute your audio. So in this, uh, this session is going to be recorded. It is actually being recorded and we will share the link along with the slide after the um, session today. So if you have questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A window throughout the session. Our org admins and mentors will respond to them accordingly. And we have, as you may already know, we have an active GSOC and discourse channels for further communications. So feel free to join the conversations or post your questions there after this webinar. And lastly, the code of conduct is in full effect here as well as throughout our community. Um, if you don't know what it means, it simply means that being kind and being respectful to one another. So in this webinar, our lead mentors will do a walkthrough of the following project ideas. Cloud events plugin for Jenkins, enhancing an existing LLM model for domain specific Jenkins knowledge, manage Jenkins CI GitHub permissions as code and open read write for plugin modernization. After um, each project idea walkthrough, we will pause for a few minutes to take questions. Um, you can either unmute yourself or oh. uh, put your questions in the Q&A window. You uh, don't Lisa, want to unmute? unmute? No, unmute will not work because this is a panel. Oh, right, right. So right. attendees okay. don't, don't, have a, don't have a mic. So the only way to ask questions is uh, through Q&A. Okay. All right. Thanks, John Mark. So let me see what else. So without delay, we will get started with Chris. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, so the first project we're going to talk about is the Cloud Events Plugin for Jenkins. So next slide. Um, for this project, the project size is of medium, uh, which is about 175 hours or more. So the project difficulty is somewhere between intermediate to advanced. The project nature is to revamp an ex existing plugin or plugins because like, it just came to our attention that um, actually something called a CD advanced plugin is in existence. And um, we may want to uh, like take a look at that as well, uh, or to start a brand new plugin from scratch to enable the listening to and emitting of cloud events from Jenkins to add support for continuous delivery presentations, CD events, which is, I think it's a subset of cloud events. The goal of this project is to build a plugin with event-driven architecture based on cloud events SDK capabilities. So in our case, we prefer to use, um, I think the Java SDK, uh, but um, that can be uh, discussed. Skills to be learned uh, through this project are Java, Go, Call events, SDK, and networking. And so, uh, next slide. So, what are cloud events? It's simply a specification for describing event data in the common way, much like the, the, the JSON format. You can specify a sync where events are sent to from the source. And this concept is important because, like, it's one of the requirements. To uh to be added to um to the plugin uh when uh when the user interacts with um this plugin 
And things can be system logs, HTTP protocol binding. It can be AWS SQS or Kafka or protobuf event format or JSON event format, etc. So the ability to filter events by status would be nice to have, such as a success, failed, um, triggered. So, but, but the project must support CDE events, which is a common specification for continuous delivery events. And a continuous delivery foundation, it's um, one of the groups we worked with uh, here at Jenkins. And uh, should I go to the next project? Uh, we, oh. uh, yeah. Chris, just we will make a short pause here if somebody would like to ask a question. So you can go ahead uh, in Q&A if you have questions. We'll wait for a little bit less than a minute. Just checking on Gitter. If... There. So I, oh, there is one from uh, Shivaji. Uh, could you please explain it more in details? Uh, Shivaji, can you say, is there a particular point that you didn't uh, understand or uh, or we just explain a little bit more in detail globally the project well here uh, Chris maybe you can start answering giving a little bit more details okay. I think so, the follow-up with at the cloud yeah. events point. Okay, so what, what is cloud events or is like why we use it? So let's see the cloud events point. Let me, let's go back to one slide. Before um, this. You want me to go back to the, the other slide? Uh, just one before. Yeah, this one. Okay. Yep. So uh, cloud events are basically just, um, oh, no, not this one, next one, uh, the one before. Not, not after, before. This one? Before. No, oh, one sorry. more. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh. No? <laughs> You're oh, going back. Hold on. You're going in opposite direction. <laughs> yeah. Well done. There. This one? Not this one, right? There, this one, the one your, the one uh, Chris is looking at. One below, number six. Number six. Okay, yeah. Cloud events, um, it's, well, um, if we want to specify, like you have to look at the docs to see like what the format is. It's basically just a format uh, to like communicate event data. And um, so it's like, this is a very brief summary. So um, I think if you want more uh, info, you could go to uh, the two links provided in the um, I think it's in the can we can we uh, can can you go to uh, one one uh, the link in the previous slide no oh, dear <laughs> no worries yeah let's go to that one so if you if you if you click on like um I think it's a CD events link CD events dot dev link no not that one the next one yeah, that one. So if you click on this one, you'll be able to find more information about the CD events I mentioned. And CD events, it's like, um, I think it's a subset of our cloud events. So cloud events would be um, what's based on. Mm -hmm. This is like a specific to CD foundation and we, we want to support this. That's that's why um, the project is like, um, in, no. uh, Chris, I'm I'm a little uh, bit new to to this. The purpose of the project would be to be able to send CD events to uh, configurable sources, or would it be to receive both. CD events? In 
both directions. Okay, we had a, a question from uh, Mohammed. Uh, do we support any of the message message blocker servers uh, you mentioned? Um, that depends on the scope of your pro proposal. It's like um, you can support like multiple formats, uh, including but not limited to like AWS, uh, SQS as one of them. Another one is like Kafka. Another one would be, uh, I think, Redis too. But um, another option would be, uh, I think, uh, you could like support, um, I think, one format called, uh, hang on, let me try to, AMQP. So that's, a, that's another format we, we can support. There's a follow up question from uh, Shivaji. Uh, okay. Is there already a cloud event plugin? I think you meant uh, you mentioned it shortly. Uh, and why do we need to do a new one? Um, we need to do a new one because the old one doesn't support CD events, as I mentioned. Uh, that's that's the reason why. That's why it's a must to support CD events. Okay, so the subset of cloud events, but more for continuous delivery. Well, I learned a couple of things. So thank you. We can, Elisa, I believe yeah. we covered the questions. Otherwise, we're still there tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so uh, you probably have a question though. It's like, can the existing plugin be updated instead of creating a new one? So that one is like, um, it's kind of like awkward because like the uh, the old, the existing plugins one of them maybe maybe we maybe work on it but um we need to um get permission uh, or we need to co collaborate with um the team uh, responsible for maintaining it the other one the original one uh, that was from uh i think it's the 2021 um gsoc program that one it's i don't think it's uh i think it's kind of like a no longer actively maintained so a better idea would be to start from scratch. Also because like um, a lot of what happened, it happened before like um, the CD events came to be. So it was like, that's why we want to start a new one. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll take the last one. Uh, um, well, if, uh, how many talks do we do, do projects do we have, Alyssa, because I, Want to know we, how, how much we have time. four today. Okay, so we'll have, we to, have we'll spend time. two more minutes. Two more yeah, minutes I'll, on this I'll one. This quickly. So, like, so first we want to create a plugin support uh, CD. And okay, yep. I think it depends. Events. And then we'll provide some examples for each cloud event services. So, uh, kind of, if I understand your question properly, but. Um, Okay, events, yeah, yeah, yeah. So have it, has anyone, yeah, I'm going to talk with someone from, um, like from CD uh, and side uh, on Friday. That's when we will learn more about it, but um, right now we don't know yet. Yep, that's it. Okay. So let's I suggest that we move on, I, I think the lead mentor is Chris Stern too, so go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So the next project we're going to talk about is enhancing an existing LLM model with domain-specific Jenkins knowledge. And um, for that too, um, the project size is, again, medium, uh, and it should take about a little bit more than 175 hours. So project difficulty is from intermediate to advanced because you would need to know some basics about um, deep learning, especially NLP, to uh, to be able to excel in this project. The project nature is to fine tune an existing open source LLM model with Jenkins specific domain knowledge and set up a UI for users to interact with it. Our goal is to develop an AI driven app from end to end that would enhance the user experience in Jenkins, such as to um, to like on prom would suggest like our uh, ways to um, maneuver some Jenkins related tasks. Uh, the skills uh, gained through the project predicted uh, would be Python, LLM, likely Lama 2, or its variants, 
but we're open to our suggestions too. Uh, AI, ML, Jenkins, UI, or AMA, which is a two to one LM locally. So next slide. The tricky and not so easy parts about this project, the first part, which is a pretty, pretty big part, is their collection. So uh, some considerations we need to have are what to look for, where to look, what should be the coverage of what kind of data. So that's like, um, you need to know Jenkins pretty well to do a good job collecting data alone. And how do you have a good balance of mix of the data? So finally part, how to do a great job. So we, we have to we have to be careful about our, like um how to achieve these outcomes with limited resources. So second point is need to work with limited resources because like everything has to be done locally and most probably on laptop. We are UX, we need to know how to make it user friendly and to how to make the presentation pleasing. And I think that's the end of this presentation. So any questions? Question right. from Noor Ziad Al Muhem. So thank you, Chris, for explaining this. Wanted to ask what basically the criteria for contributor selection for this project are. There is no code base actually for this. Yeah, that's a good question. But the thing is, you need to uh, demonstrate some knowledge of Jenkins to to begin with, because like this project, the, the sole purpose is to facilitate the usage of Jenkins. So you have to, you have to like, um, you should submit some PRs ideally, uh, maybe to uh, Jenkins style or Jenkins core even, or to some Jenkins plugin to them. So you at least you know what Jenkins is about basically and how to use Git. And, uh, to also to like, demonstrate the, that the, the knowledge, enough knowledge of Jenkins and how it all, all works together. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. And also you need to um, write or draft a proposal to be uh, reviewed, or if you don't want to be reviewed, submit it directly. But for that proposal, you have to explain very clearly and to demonstrate, you have to know how the knowledge to um, to carry the, the project through to completion successfully. And uh, that's like not so easy to do, actually. And you need to read, read a lot about Jenkins, um, maybe uh, the our documentation uh, on Jenkins.io. And, um, and also maybe uh, there, 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 there are some uh, YouTube playlists too, like especially the ones with Darren Pope. Uh, I would recommend those too if you want to like uh, get some hands-on knowledge about how Jenkins is like and how it works. Um, it's basic architecture. It's like on on top of that, it's I, I, actually this project is very difficult to do like uh, properly. So like um um, so if you want to like try for it, you need to put in a lot of effort. No, this that did this answer your question or you want more details? It looks like yeah. Uh, but he has oh she, sorry. Uh, another question if that works. Do you think we can investigate other open source LLMs as well? In my mind, open orca, for example, and I was thinking of Mistral also. Sorry, yeah, my... was, yep. was, uh, open orca. I'm not sure we we we, we could discuss. But yeah, once we uh, get to the proposal review stage. Yeah, Mr. Also, okay. thank you. Okay. okay. So the the choice is open in the proposal. Is did I understand it correctly, Chris? Yep, that's correct. So we're we're you suggesting one of the models. Uh, um, or the en engines. I'm not familiar I with that. I don't. I think we are suggesting to use just one, some open source LLM, and that's the only mm -hmm. criteria. Yeah, uh, that I agree it must be open source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and we need also to check data ownership. Yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, I think it's no more question. Yeah. Oh, no, Noor is. So I would like to send a draft proposal for this, and maybe we can discuss. I will investigate. Uh, this is a this is a very wise step to do. So the principle is, as we explained in previous session, is that you you by writing a, a draft proposal you start a discussion. Uh, publicly uh, with the community and with the mentors in particular. So sending in a draft proposal and to start a discussion about that is really the way to go. Okay, I want to add that we uh, this year, um, I think at least it starts a forum for submitting a proposals for review. So that may be a, a more agreeable for most people because like that provides some level of privacy and uh, Maybe a bit um, like to so so as to uh, prevent plagiarism as well. I think so. Yeah, just want to bring it up. Yeah, and also the intention was we had last year we had so many um, people sending us drafts in different places, and there was a high likelihood that we could have missed. Um, you know, one or two here and there. So I thought the forum could help us keep everything together in one place um, so that we can make it manageable for our, 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 our mentors. Yeah, that's a big idea. So community.jenkins.io, correct? Um, no. Yes, but there is a theater. form that I put out. So um, and oh, a I form. will... Okay, got yeah. you, yeah. And mm -hmm. I'll resend our... It's going to be all over the place, so you can't miss it, really. Yeah. Okay. Good. We're good. So we can move on with Alex at this time? Yep. Okay. All right. Just didn't hey, know everyone. That... Go ahead. Um... No, I wanted to make fun of that's me. I didn't know you had so many gray hairs. With a wizard. All right, John Mark. <laughs> then I will go ahead. <laughs> All right. Yeah, my name is Alexander Brandes. I am a Jenkins core maintainer and governance board member. And actually, it's the first time for me being a GSOC mentor. So, yay. <laughs> okay. I'm mentoring the project called Manage Jenkins CI GitHub Permissions as Code. Thanks for the next slide, Alyssa. Um, the project is called RPU in short form, and I will use the abbreviation in the further slide. So don't get confused. RPU just means repository permission updater, just the short form of the project. Um, as you can see, the repository permission updater in a nutshell manages artifactory permission and automatic release permission for Jenkins plugins. It doesn't have any to, anything to do with repositories at all. It's just a bit misleading the name. And the goal of the project is to turn it into a tool that actually manages repository permission because the outcome of the project focuses on a tool you can submit a pull request to. And once the pull request is merged, it updates the GitHub permissions of the repository inside the Jenkins CI GitHub organization. Some of you may have already taken a look at it and you know that we have around 2,200 plugin repositories inside the Jenkins CI organization. And if someone wants to update a membership, this is currently done by hand by a few people, including myself. And the goal is to automate this progress. Next slide. Yes, this is a draft I made up how it can look like. This is not how it is supposed to be look like, and it doesn't show how it is at the moment. On the left hand, you can see user files APR. At the bottom, you can see a new entry to the YAML file edit called GitHub team. And under this list, people can add GitHub usernames of people who should be added to the GitHub team. Once this PR is filed and merged, the tool should update the team membership in the GitHub repository on the middle hand, I added a screenshot of the team, how it can look like. 
if team members are added. If you don't mind handing over screen share, Alyssa, then I would quickly show what the RPU repository looks like. We lost the slide. Oh, okay, right. sorry. Yeah, you should share. Uh, Unfortunately, I can't screen share from my current machine. This is pretty unfortunate. Um, okay. Is there a link or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If if someone if someone if you could go to the um, Jenkins Infra organization on GitHub. Okay, hold on. Let me go back. Are you logged into GitHub? Um... You don't really need to be logged in. Just quickly demonstrate where it is. I may not be I am logged in. Uh, no, no, you're good. And this one, Alex? Yes. Oh, Jenkins it. Infra, just the organization overview, please. Uh, organization. The link uh, t top left where the the octopus is, Jenkins Infra. You click on that. Right. Thanks, so Mark. If you scroll a bit down, the repository should be pinned a bit more. Yeah, that's the repository permission updater. Right column, middle. Right column. To yeah. the right. Oh, what is there. it called again right here? The repository oh. permission updater. One ah. up there. Oh, the wrong one. This one. There. Yes. This is this. The is the GitHub repository of the existing repository permission updater code. All the tooling currently lives there. And if you scroll down in the repository, you can see a long, long readme explaining how it works in detail. I don't want to go over that right here because we have everything written down, how it works, how the ammo file must be structured, must be structured, how the GitHub um, repository is defined, how the artifactory path works in detail. We have everything there. So if you want to know more about the repository permission updater in its current state, feel free to read the readme or shoot me a ping in the GitHub channel. On the first slide of the presentation, I added a link to the GitHub channel where the discussion happens. If you haven't, if you had, it's slide 11, I think. Uh, 10. Yeah, don't hesitate to join the link and ask any questions in case something is unclear and you don't really know where to get started or how to get started or how the RPU works in the current state and how you could contribute without breaking it. it. So don't hesitate to ask me a question or ask the others. I'm always there, just shoot me a ping. If you might, don't mind going to the last slide. Yeah, the project is a medium is a medium sized project. I ranked it as beginner to intermediate because it doesn't really involve working with Jenkins itself, but it is a tooling for the entire Jenkins CI organization. Every plugin, every component, every API, every wrapper depends upon you need in order to cut releases, and it's a critical component in the Jenkins infra infrastructure. And as I said before, the goal of the project is to automate the management of GitHub permissions for the Jenkins CI organization. Given currently this is all done by hand and takes super long if you want to update five or 10 teams with 20 people. The skills, you, the skills to learn invoke Java, Groovy, Git, Maven, Snake YAML, and a custom GitHub API we are using, which runs the repository permission updater under the hood. But to be said, there are like two or three, maybe four Groovy files in the repository permission updater, which can be removed if you want to transform the RPU into a Java only project, which would be totally fine. And I would appreciate it if you can get rid of the Groovy files there. So you don't really need to learn Groovy. This is just in order to get rid of the files. 
At Snake YAML is the library we use in order to read and manage the data for every repository file. At the bottom of the slide, I added a link to the Jenkins IO page outlining a bit more information about the project, the scope, how to get started, or adding a link to the GitHub API I mentioned before in order to get yourself familiar with it. I have a question. Yes, I just read LV. Our Seabot can do some GitHub operations already. I imagine it will be superseded by this project. Yeah, I'm aware that we have an IRC bot, but I don't have an IRC setup. I don't have a bouncer setup, and I prefer using my GitHub administration rights because it is much, much quicker because instead of writing five or six bot commands. But yeah, you're totally right. The IRC bot will likely be superseded if the project takes off and finalizes because you will no longer need to run any commands. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Evi. I tried it once and I, I didn't really get it to work. So, yeah. But ultimately, you're right. The goal is to get rid of the IRC bot and get it to run in the GitHub PR merge state totally. So we can get rid of that all and make sure once the PR is merged, everything is machine handled. Um, I think John I yeah. yeah, I have a question and, and a user request. So uh, is the project, or do you recommend that the project also handles uh, so um, GitHub access rights and, uh, and so on, but will it also handle removing? Uh, so if somebody decides to leave uh plugin maintainer or, or these will it also handle currently it does not very well mm -hmm. yeah that's actually a good question in the current state the github api we are using already supports this functionality but we never got around implementing it so if you file a pr removing members from the defined list in the best case it should update their permissions as well and remove the people from the team because the underlying mm. API does already exist. But it doesn't work well because I still receive messages. And so. But there's yeah. something to look in. It's not just adding users. It's also uh, removing. Uh, yes. Okay. Currently, it doesn't do anything. But be reminded, you can still leave GitHub Teams on your own if you want to do that. So you don't really need to do that through the RPU, but that would be the most easiest way to do that. Are there other questions from the attendants? In case you have more questions after the meeting, don't hesitate to ask us in the GitHub channel. I'll be there and I will try to my best and answer them. Great. Thank you very much. So, Lisa, you're on mute. Hello. So last but uh, not least, so my name is Valentin. It's also the first time that I'm a GSOC mentor this year. Um, so I will present uh, the open rewrite for plugging uh, modernization. Can I move the slide? Thank you. So the, the project size is a medium, but I would also expect that is a project that will also continue to evolve a lot after the GCO, GSOC phase, especially to implement more uh, RECIP. I uh, rank this as uh, intermediate to advanced because uh, you also need to know a lot the plugin ecosystem and what it means to modernize and update the uh, plugins. <clears throat> so the project nature is that we want to automate the, the plugin modernization, transform, and also perform large scale uh, refactor refactoring. So the goal is to provide a new tool, uh, generic, based on the Open Rewrite uh, framework. So Open Rewrite is a tool uh, based in uh, Java with uh, some core uh, implementation and modules. 
and it allows you to implement your own uh, receipt. Um, so the idea is to implement, uh, to use this framework to create a new uh, new tool and uh, demonstrate it on uh, running it on the, the plugin ecosystem and uh, see how uh, robust it can be uh, with some uh, implemented uh, receipt. So if you go, if you already went to the plugin page, there are a lot of examples of, uh, of receipt. I don't uh, expect to have all uh, implemented here. Um, but uh, that's something that can be extended uh, on uh, on the future. So if you can go back to the slide, thank you. Here, uh, one of the main challenge is the dependencies between uh, receipt. Uh, if we take, for example, uh, one example where we want to replace one dependency with one API plugin, the naive way would be to just transform the POM file and add this dependency, but most of the time this will fail because probably this plugin is depending on a very old version of core and adding the dependency, the new API plugin will, uh, will fail and the plugin will not even uh, compile. So here the challenge is really to build those kind of dependency graph based on uh, plugin uh, metadata in order that when we at the end open the pull request that uh, we don't have any false positive and that the, the plugin actually uh, is a building by the, by the CI. So on the, the required skilled uh, Java, of course, uh, data structure, especially on uh, graphs and uh, trees. So open rewrite is using the, the, the trees and the visit on pattern that you can uh, implement to, uh, to uh, perform operation on the nodes and perform transformation. And of course, also on the Jenkins uh, tool chain like Maven, so if we want also in the future to uh, to integrate this uh, generic tool to the to the tool chain uh, is good also to uh, to know how, uh, how is it uh, working and on the link you will find yeah, more also information about the the, the project so if you have any uh, question Looks like mm, a fun yet. project. Very interesting, yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Are there general questions? Oh, yes. When the last date for draft, oh, draft proposal? Uh, Alisa. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would like to have it done, well, let me see. So we are February. So March 18th is when um, submissions are being collected by Google. So definitely much before that, because you need to give mentors and lead mentors some time to review your proposal. So I am hoping, so today is the 27th. Let me take a look. The 18th of March is when proposals are, are, are open for, um, for Google. So I'm hoping either this week, next week um, would be good because we need to give time to uh, mentors, like I said, to, um, to provide feedback. Okay, we have two questions about the last project, Open Rewrite here, one from Jakruti asking uh, the project goal is to use open uh, AI to automate the plugin modernization. Is that a good rephrasing of open rewrite? Um, I'm not sure exactly by open AI, but we want to use uh, open rewrite that, um, that is uh, producing, um, let's say, predictable way on all the, the recipe implemented. So I don't think that on this project, 
we want to to use uh, AI to uh, to do those kind of uh, those kind of things. Yeah, it starts with the same word, open, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. It's not the same. End. <laughs> yeah, totally different tool. Thank you, Jack Booty. Okay. Uh, then we have Ooh. a question from Debayan Gosh. How does we faster? and JDOM come into the picture for open rewrite. So refaster and JDOM. So um, if you um, implement a recipe using open rewrite, so it's a Java based. So here you are, let's say free to use other framework to perform the, the transformation. Open rewrite is already providing many uh, APIs to perform a transformation on XML or uh, Java code. But uh, we could also explore when we implement those recipes using other framework or uh, libraries to perform those uh, those change. So I hope it answered the, the question. Thank you. Um, now we have a few general questions. One of them being, can we discuss with mentors our ideas about the project and how? Um, well, uh, we have Gitter. We have community.jenkins.io. I'm not so sure there is a, um, a channel in Gitter for each and every project. Um, Alexander showed us earlier one he has created for his project, but I don't know if Chris has uh, one for his project, for, for example. Some, but yes. Some... Yeah. Like, okay. Like, usually, what we do is like we start a new channel after the project is selected. Yes. Yeah. Like, we discuss like, which medium to use. So the um, uh, GSOC SIG uh, Gitter channel should be the right way to discuss. Of course, there is no one-on-one. -on -one. Everything should be public. So it's yeah. no use to start sending private messages on um, communityjenkins.io, for example. Uh, everything should be public. I hope that answers your question. And other admins or mentors, please uh, add comments or something if you think I was wrong doing that. No, no, you're... Yeah. you're... Perfectly to the point. It's Thank you, a waste of uh, bandwidth um, to start answering and discussing with each individual one. So it's the whole community that needs to benefit from the discussion. And the other thing is that otherwise it starts to instill a defiance or suspicion in the other that somebody could get uh, a better relationship or better answer from this or that mentor. So it's best to make everything in the open, everything public. So I think this has been covered. Yeah, we have another question from Akash Mishra. Mishra. Uh, can we give an in-progress proposal for review? I mean, more than 90% completed? Please, please. Yeah. Do you answer that one? Or somebody yes, else wants to. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I already said, please, please do. Uh, it's uh, once you have something that takes forms, and if you have questions or doubts on that, make them clearly in the document uh, and make them obvious. So you show what you're doing, what is your thought uh, progress, and you try to elicit uh, comments, advice, or um, reactions by the community and others so um yeah well I don't send in a document that just has a title i do have a question. <laughs> I, I do have a follow-up question though is like for john mark so do, do like this year do you have a limit for how many times um a review can be requested for the same proposal do, do you have such a thing this is a good question uh I am here only as an advisor in that. So um, this is a discussion that the org admins uh, need to uh, uh, to have. Uh, wow. The point that Chris is doing is that last year we had a huge amount of proposals and half-baked uh, one, and this takes a lot of time into account. So, uh, well, I, I leave you, Chris, or, or Bruno, or others. It would be interesting to set a limit to the number of reviews. What is your take at that, Chris? I think maybe not more than three times. 
sounds exactly. very reasonable. Yeah. So I think, I think so. what we also want to keep in mind is all mentors and co-mentors have a full-time job and um, they have limited time. So um, keep in mind that if you're going to submit draft proposals, you know, several times, they may not get around to reviewing at all those times that you want them to. Okay. Um, just because, you know, the amount of proposals that we get and plus our full-time job, it can be a lot. I can answer the, the, the question of Noor uh, here, moving on. So my final question, Noor, I don't believe you. You come with a lot of very interesting questions, so keep them coming. Alyssa is going to turn off the meeting when we go to the wait. So, um, so what? Uh, so what is the criteria Google depends on in deciding which project to fund and which to refuse? I want to clarify uh, this. Uh, the process is following: is that the Jenkins community org admins and mentors will review the proposals and the project and rank them and say, if we have only one, and uh, uh, going one step further, Google is going to tell us, you will receive this year so many slots. And uh, so let's say Google is going to say, you, we can share only money for you to make four projects. Automatically, the four first projects in our ranking list will be picked. So the ranked list is key. And this is what the mentors are going to work. If we're in a super good year and we have the capacity, if we propose 12 slots, and say, we're able to do 12 projects. And Google says, yes, you get these 12s, we'll do 12. So it's a balance between our mentoring capacity, uh, the, uh, the quality of the proposals that will then go through how many slots uh, Google uh, uh, gives us. I hope that was clear. So the decision and ranking is Jenkins community. Google just says, he, they open their wallet and say, we can offer you or pay for four projects. Alyssa, was that clear or did I completely yeah. mess up my no, answer? I think, you're, I think you're right on. Okay, good. Uh, so that was answered. Which one do we have? We have from uh, Mohammed. Uh, so as a new contributor, what what you expect from us to do as first step? Okay, that is a very big, uh, very big question. Um, well, I, I see Chris is answering is answering there. Uh, I think that we're. I I propose that we park this question, or if somebody can answer that. Uh, and I think it has been answered. Otherwise, we're going to be. Okay, there. I just gave it. Actually, it's just a link from Google for contributors to. Right. It's like about what to expect, um, how to uh, start the application process. Yeah, so, okay. it also teach you how to choose an organization, find the right project, write proposal, and what to do if you get turned down. Right. Okay. Thank you. You rescue me there because I, I was fearing that I would get into a rabbit hole and giving two explanations. Noor, yeah, I was right. There is another question from Noor. So this brings another question to my mind. Uh, can we share old channels created for specific projects? For example, uh, if one was created uh, to the fine tune, can we share this also? Well, I've, I've, I can here, make a list. I'm, I can yeah. make a list. We can make a centralized list, and normally the communication channels per project are also or should be on the project page. So, 
to, I think that was answered. And we have the last one from uh, De Bayan. How many projects can we submit a project, a proposal for? Um, as many as you wish. No, that's not right. But it's a... one, but you need to have a quality proposal. And, and don't forget, you're going to make the, uh, the mentors, you're going to make them waste their, their time. Oh, but uh, uh, I think as a general rule, like Google is, um, only allows three proposals to be submitted. Oh, um, okay. That's, that's okay. I didn't know that, that rule, but generally spreading over th more than three is, is you're not going to be in, uh, enough in, uh, in depth on the, on the project. So yeah, three, would, uh, three sounds a, a good limit. I would focus on quality over quantity. Now, what you need to know is that um, it, there is an interest to work on several projects because some projects uh, might not be chosen from the community side because uh, mentors cannot be spread or multiplied and spread on several projects. So when we reach the end, um, the, the number of possible projects will uh, start to uh, to be limited, not limited, but uh, well, I didn't. I I uh, I'm, I missed that that answer. Um, Chris, help me on that one. Um... Uh, what I wanted to say that. Uh, competing on two projects could be an interesting uh, thing because sometimes mentors withdraw. Yeah, which could happen. Like, yeah, sometimes projects get cancelled too. So yeah, and uh, we we have our priorities. So if you want to to uh, compete, so it can be fluid at certain times, but it life is not easy. So you need to choose. So. Um, Three maximum is a very good rule of thumb. That, that was a conclusion that you need to, to remember. Yeah, uh, but as a general rule, if a project is likely going to be cancelled, we'll make an announcement in advance. Yeah. Happened last year. Um, other questions? Oh, there, or Lisa, if you want to conclude, we're now five minutes from the end. Yeah. Um, so uh, we so t here are some links that we thought might be helpful for candidates. Um, there's a lot of reading. There's a lot of due diligence that's going to be needed on your end. Uh, but I wanted to call out the third bullet here, which is your draft proposal for review. Again, if it did not make it onto this form, it will not be reviewed. And like I said um, earlier, all of us, we have a full-time job. So this will help us keep everything in one place that we're not going off and searching for your draft somewhere else. Um, so if it doesn't make it onto this form, it will not get reviewed. And you will need to give uh, mentors and co-mentors time to review your drafts. So submissions are open for, for from Google on March 18th. So that means that you need to provide us, give us like at least one to one week perhaps to review um, your drafts and provide feedback. Okay, so work the dates backward and figure that out. Give us a week or two to um, review. Um, but yeah. So we have another five more minutes for questions. There was there was, there was one question um, answered in written form, but I can give some color to that. Question was about is the ranking visible um, in real time and is it public? The ranking is not public. So these are discussions in waiting. Uh, so uh, that's done internally in uh, the 
mentor in an organ mentee. Yes, I will share the slides and the recording after the session. Yeah. It'll be um, on the Gator channel. Okay. Done and on. Uh, if we send a draft for review after March 18, will there be any problem? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, Chris. I think it should be okay. It's okay. Uh, but do we have a hot deadline for reviews? We should have one, right? I think we had one last year. Uh, don't remember the the date. Normally, uh, so the 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 time spent on the reviews is limited. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, because we also need to rank. Uh, so the nearer you get to the final date for um, submitting your proposal to Google, this is where they, they turn off the uh, shut down the entrance. Uh, the closer you get to the date, the less valuable review you will have. Um, how about we make it one week before the application closes? Oh, I think this is a good proposal. So yeah. yeah, that's fine. I can update the form with the dates. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, and that was the last one. Thank you, well, Mohammed. <laughs> Good that it was useful uh, for you. We try to improve each time on this. Alyssa, I think we're yes. reached the end now. We're at the top of the hour. Yeah. Great session. Thank you, everybody, for your questions. Thank you to our panelists for today. Um, we'll see you guys on the Gitter channel. Have a good Thank evening. Okay. Have a good night. Have a good day. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.